Would you like to see our new and improved bolt buster system? Watch us break sample number 114 on this episode of How Not to Bolt Bust. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinks and welcome to some random driveway where we have now broken 113 brake tests to get our system dialed here on Bolt Buster before we go to granite, limestone, sandstone locations because that's a pain in the ass to get all the way to the mountains if your system's not working. But we have learned a ton of stuff since the last episode where we broke sample number one. And we're gonna show you how we set this up for sample number 114, which is our next sample. It's a 10 millimeter solid leg bolt and hilti glue from boltproducts.com. So, Bobby is going to be our model and he's going to show us how to set all this up. Bobby has helped me do all of this from engineering stage to breaking every single bolt we have so far. So we will have him demonstrate now. All right. I am a bolting model. <laughs> what do <All> you? Right? <laughs> yes, you said it right. All right, bolting model, Bobby. All right. All right. We, um, he's going to slide over the machine. He actually walks it. He doesn't. Well, he's stronger than me. I walked it because you got to line this up directly over the bolt. You might want to go just a tad bit more, yeah, right about there. The... And the dynamometer is going to be in this orientation so we can stand in the garage. And uh, we are using a steel carabiner, which we found way better than quick links. Each time we do have to lower this by lifting that up and unspinning that. There are, I'm assuming, easier ways of doing things. but. Uh, this is the most affordable we found. Oh, you were so close. I'd help you, but I'm filming, Bobby. <laughs> All right. Did he get it, guys? All right, sweet. Um, perfect, so he has to redo that. Now, this nut was uh, an interesting design because otherwise it just goes, let's see here, it just goes too far down and starts to hit this guy. So, let's watch this strong model in action it's a little bit manual of a process but in order this only has a four inch stroke it's a hollow hydraulic cylinder and a four inch stroke doesn't allow us much more than to just pull up a pretension bolt because bolts stretch things go up it takes a while to get rid of the slack um, you want to put about two kilonewtons on that for us um, one thing we have to do each time is Make sure we take off the peak hold and put it back on. This denimometer is a crane scale. It doesn't have a super fast read. It is still like 100 hertz or so, 100 uh, reads per second, which is plenty fast for how slow we are pulling this bolt. So, um, so this is inside a uh, cle clevis. Got the bolt there this and we can't we the, the problem is you got to get reduce this down each time to get it into a connector that will go into your bolt and we were trying to use uh, soft shackles in here and it just wasn't it was these are a little bit bigger bolts and so it's it um, would work technically to have another soft shackle but carabiners are actually a lot quicker to just clip and unclip uh, if there was a way to use soft shackles believe me I would so we can actually pre-tension this to over two kilonewtons just because our nut is rotted. It's pretty nice. Um, okay, so now that that's set up, a lot of the work, a lot of the work here at Bolt Busters is camera work and making sure we record all the data in detail, which is um, the difference between a lot of brake tests and these ones is how thorough we are about slow motion, having three cameras on it, so you can watch what, what's happening and when it's happening with our wide angle camera versus our close up and the camera I'm holding is the super slow motion, 30 times slower than in real life. So we're gonna set all the cameras up and show you this brake test of sample number 114.
Okay, as soon as that's done, we turn off all these cameras. This is super slow motion and it's super slow at responding, okay. Hopefully we got a good one. Now, um, that goes everywhere. And so what happened in this case was, let's focus, the bolt snapped, the weld did not break. And it creates, it just gets thinner and thinner and thinner like if you're pulling apart licorice. Almost looks like licorice. And we got 30.28, which is, what, is that 20 kilonewtons lower than our last test? 27 kilonewtons, almost 27 kilonewtons lower. So it, results are all over the place with bolts. So it's just interesting to see how much of a variety there is, uh, variation there is in our um, samples, which is something interesting to know. Um, now all these forces are pretty damn high, but what we have here is, um, this is a hydraulic hose. So it's a uh, hydraulic oil filling this up and pushing up this cylinder. And then our foot pump uh, is just so much better. We have an air compressor supply here. And so this has been pretty nice. Um, and it pumps the oil in this reservoir and goes um, to there. So Bobby, push the release and you can watch the hydraulic cylinder go down when we release the pressure. So then what we do is reset everything. We record this. So part of that recording is 30.28. So we open up this thing, go to our 114. All right, let's see here, 30.28. And at home, I detail all this up. We pre-installed all these glue-ins, so that's why I already have the information here. And in this case, it did not break weld. And I have um, just some quick notes and then I just add a lot more later. And then we have our little uh, collection of heads there. So the next batch of these we have to break test is the HCR PLX glue in forged bolts from Fixie. Supposedly are uh, more corrosion resistant than normal 304 stainless steel. Supposedly more than 316, right? Supposedly more than 316. Supposedly, I've heard otherwise, but we will find out. Oh, these are the smaller fixies. So we have uh, six more to do here. And then we go over into our shear machine, which we'll show you once we start. Okay, so we're all done breaking things in tension. So now we're breaking things in shear. What we have here is a five inch hydraulic cylinder with a two inch rod and a 24 inch stroke. That's quite a bit of oil. Um, I think there's four four gallons in this thing. It's pretty gnarly. Um, I like the tie rod style because it lays flat. It's not round and it's perfect for what we're doing. Equalization is a myth, but it does work quite a bit. Uh, works good enough. We did the equilateral triangle, which we have. If you're curious why we do equilateral triangles, watch the 20 episodes I have promoting it. This is a 10 foot long soft shackle because I love soft shackles. I was able to fit one here. Dyneema equalite, not equalizes, but has no friction. It'll like equalize as good as equalization is going to happen directly onto this uh, rod in the back. So what we do is we pull over this dyno. Come over here, Bobby. So we have the same dyno as we used on the bolt buster tension machine and we put it in line here. And it's pretty hard to get the dyno reading and the bolt at the same time. Maybe we'll get better at that. So you can kind of see how things are moving. If we notice anything happening, we'll like read off the dyno, but we can see it from where we're gonna be. You might be asking why we have this shield. We learned the hard way after hitting our sweet lady who lets us do this to her poor driveway. She is changing this driveway. We've hit her house a few times. Um, this has been very effective, but our sheetrock, we did a couple of examples that went right through the sheetrock. It's hilarious. You should see the outline one of the bolts made. However, we do have a shield here. It does block the carabiner and the bolt, if the bolt snaps, whoo, things go flying. And we have our two cameras hitting it for redundancy. The camera Bobby's using right now is the one we use for slow-mo and that we would also capture as much as possible in slow motion because that makes the best Instagram posts. So what we have here is a whole bunch of bolts. Uh, some of them we've already broken, but we've noticed that this distance here is not a problem for uh, results. So we're still using the same space because our 
hydraulic cylinder is in line with this stuff and that's what we want to test. We have not glued in these to test twisting because we didn't want to crack an entire healthy um, tube for just three bolts. We wanted to get more bolts and have more of a plan because healthy glue is almost 50 about yeah, $50 per cartridge, 11 ounces. So uh, it's pretty expensive. Don't want to waste, well, more than we already are. So our setup is pretty simple. We have a battery. And the reason we have that is because we are trying to be mobile. I'm not going to have a plug everywhere I go. But also because DC winches and DC pumps like this, because this is for a um, dump, dump truck. truck. Yep. So they're, they're just a lot cheaper. They make them by the dozen, right? By the millions. So uh, AC units are designed to be used all the time, and uh, they're way, way, way more expensive. Thousands of dollars. This thing was two, three, or four hundred bucks. So we have two hydraulic hoses coming out of it because there's two hydraulic hoses that go into this. And what happens is we basically pump oil into one side to push the piston, pump oil on this side to push the piston back out. It's uh, pretty simple when you understand how it works. But I didn't know shit about hydraulics, and so I have a few things I didn't need to buy. But I did learn a lot. Cheaper than a college education. Um, then, we can stand all the way back here in order to break our bolt, which is safe-ish uh, of a distance. So uh, I have a battery charger that charges our battery when we have electricity. Uh, perfect. Okay, so we have our cameras running. Uh, have my cameras running, okay. Crazy. So I turn off one, saving data. Then I take this and I film it. Come check this out. Oh my God, that is warm. Well, that's pretty hot actually. That's that's really fucking warm. Um, so we film it. We get up nice and close. We get all the footage that you see here on Bolt Busters, and the glue popped off, and uh, the dust filled the hole. So. Um, Yep, we just only have to push the button over here to reset it. So we just connect it to the next bolt, and then once it's far enough, we start using whoopee slings until we go and break all of those. And then turn it a little and break all those. So it's only the cost of three cheap $2, $1 hanger, $1 bolts uh, in order to set up a pretty versatile system. We can break probably 50 bolts with just this setup right here. So we're obviously 120 brake tests into a thousand brake goal of ours and we're going to probably rewrite the bolting bible when we're done with everything we're learning. Put in the comments below what you want to see broken. We've thought of a lot of things but we want to hear what you have to say. We are going to test this obviously in granite, sandstone, limestone but we had opportunity to use a, uh, a driveway that was just real local to my house. And uh, it's nice to iron out our systems before we go out in the real world. All these bolts are pretty dang strong, but they do fail. Therefore, you shouldn't highline. <laughs>